Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see you out. Good to be able to be out. Boy, I tell you, I appreciate the good service this morning. Don't you? I needed that. That was something that's just like uh, an old car about run out of gas and pull into a service station to get you some good high test gas, and then you're ready to go again. Every once in a while, we have to get to refuel. Yes, sir. And uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate God's goodness. It's good to be here tonight. Yes. Good to see you out like this. Good to be able to be out like this. We didn't have to be this way. I mean, we could have been in a hospital. We could have been, uh, most of us could have been in the penitentiary if we'd have got what we deserved. And, uh, uh, but the Lord uh, saw fit to allow us to be here. Well, tonight, uh, we'll get right in the service. Got to some... Uh, uh, meet with the young people. They're going to meet over in the fellowship hall. We won't hold the service long, uh, but we'll uh, try to get over there. Got your Bibles in the book of Genesis. <clears throat> in the book of Genesis, it's a book of the beginnings. Uh, the earth we live on had a beginning. The God that created this earth had no beginning. I mean, it's hard, to, it's hard to comprehend that. But he always was. You can't find a time that God wasn't. And he always will be. There'll never be a time that he's not there. And I'm glad I know that God personally. I don't just know about him, but I know him. I know him as creator. I know Him as Savior, I know Him as Redeemer, and I know Him personally. Amen. Now, let us stand and pray uh, before that we uh, get into the service. Anybody got an object that they want to mention? Hands going up all over the house. Uh, all right, Bo, you pray with us. All right, the book of Genesis, chapter 1, and that we got down about verse uh, 24. And uh, last time we studied about uh, the, the fifth day when God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and it may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. He, be, he made and created uh, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. I mean, it's God. Uh, when uh, uh, when you uh, see it, it's God. Now, I want to read you a, a scripture here in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Uh, before that we go any farther, if I can find it right quick. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses uh, 1 through 3. The Bible said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I'm not going to preach on faith. Uh, but faith is something that we have to have, that uh, it is uh, something that we don't see, that we can't reach out and touch, but we just believe. Right. That's the reason the Bible said we're saved by grace, through faith, faith in uh, what we uh, know about Jesus, what we've heard about him, what we've read about him. And faith in believing that he uh, died for our sins and he's totally uh, forgiven us our sins and he's worthy. The Bible said in the book of Romans uh, uh, that he can be just and the justifier also. Right. He can forgive sin and still be just because that he paid for sin. Right. He died for sin. And therefore, uh, uh, we, uh, we can have faith in that. And the Bible said, for it, the elders obtained a good report. But now here's what I want you to notice. In verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. 
Now, uh, we read it and we believe it. I don't believe in evolution. I don't believe that man come from a one cell organism. I don't believe that man uh, evolved and got better and better and better and better. I believe that God created man that we'll read about a little bit tonight. But he said here, the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now notice this, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen. Now the things that we see is not made with things that uh, do appear. What it, what it meant was that God uh, didn't take something and remake it or remold it or make something out of something, he made everything out of nothing. I mean, uh, that is creation. And the Bible said, and, and let, let's, uh, let me hurry on here in verse 24. God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. Now notice that, after his kind. God made everything different. And he made it that it would bring forth after his kind. Wouldn't it be a confusing world if, uh, uh, if uh, uh, animals were mixed together? Right. Wouldn't it be a confusing world if animals... But God made it that uh, they will bring forth uh, after their kind and they uh, have a nature and everything has its unique nature. Everything has a different nature and it can't get away from that. The, uh, uh, the Apostle Peter talked about it. He said as a dog will return to his vomit. That's the nature of a dog. You know what a dog will do? Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, he'll puke or vomit, and then it'll turn around, and he'll return right back to it. And it said a sow will return to the mire. Uh, you can't change that nature. Uh, you can take a sow, you can clean her up, put her in a tanning bed, uh, put earrings in her ears, put that perfume on her and cold cream on her, uh, turn her loose, and she'll head for a mud hole. You know, the nature of a dog is to be a dog. Right. Now, I'm not trying to be gross, but uh, I want to tell you, my daughter's got a little old dog, and I'm afraid to say the name of it. It's mixed up, but uh, uh, it's a, a little old fuzzy dog. Stays in the house. She uh, keeps it shirred, gives it bath, buys it the best food. I bet you know what she do. Uh, sometimes she'll turn it out. And uh, my pastor runs right above her house. I got cattle there. That dog will go up there and he'll hunt him a big pile of cow manure uh, and it'll eat something and he'll roll in it and lay down and screw it through it. Yeah. Uh, why does it do that? Because it's a dog. Oh, That's right. its nature. And it's going to be that way. And dogs, it's going to be that way. I used to coon hunt and I had uh, the best dog I ever had. Hated skunks. And he'd catch every skunk that he'd come across. And when it caught a skunk, it wouldn't just leave it, kill it and leave it alone. It would roll in it and scoot through it and uh, you might as well go home when that happens because they can't smell nothing else and you can't neither. Uh, but that's a dog's nature. And, and therefore, uh, God made it uh, that a dog would act like a dog. And a cat would act like a cat and a cow and so forth. And God made them unique and God separated them. And the Bible said uh, in verse 25, And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind, everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Right. I mean, it was good. And I have to say amen to that. Yeah. It was good. God made it for, uh, uh, when God created this earth, he didn't just, uh, uh, he didn't just spontaneously uh, say something. He knew what he was doing. And he made everything that it would correspond and come about and bring about the plan of God. We can't see that now because the earth's got a curse on it. Because when Adam sinned, the earth failed. But we'll see it one day during the millennium. You can believe whatever you want to. Uh, but I believe during the millennium uh, that the curse is taken off this earth. Uh, we'll see the earth like it was before uh, that Adam sinned. And we see here, uh, uh, we, we see that, uh, uh, that these animals, they'll, uh, they'll, be, they'll be upon the earth. Uh, you say, preacher, will they be hurt then? No, sir. Uh, the Bible said that the lion would lay down with the lamb. Right. The bear would eat straw like an ox. A child would put his hand in the, 
a cockatrice co den, which is a real poison snake. And uh, he, he would play with it. Now uh, we see. But you know there's going to be a time, and I don't know, uh, I just wanted to mention this. Uh, during the tribulation period, there's going to be a time when the fear of man is taken off of animals. Uh, did you know that in uh, Revelation chapter 6, there's, uh, uh, when death comes through, it's going to destroy with what? Uh, the sword and the famine and with the uh, beast of the earth and the fear will be taken off of them. And, uh, and they will attack me, and they're going to kill a fourth part of man. And folks, I'll tell you, I, God put a fear of animals, I mean a fear of man upon animals, or we'd be in so much trouble today, we couldn't get out of the house. Uh, but it, it said here, uh, and uh, after his and God saw that it was good. Uh, but in verse 26, and God said, let us, I mean, who was he talking to? That's right. He's talking to the, uh, uh, to the Spirit of God. He's talking to the Son. Uh, I believe, and you can believe whatever you want to, but I believe that they was a, a triune Godhead. I believe right. that uh, they was God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, let us make man in our own image. And he made man, and, the, and, uh, and uh, he said, after our likeness. He said, let us make man. Now, when he said, let us, I believe that he... I said, let's make him that he will be like us all. You see, he made us in a trinity. Right. We are made. Uh, we are made. Uh, uh, we have a body. We have a soul. And we have a spirit. And we're, uh, that's the way that God, the, the Godhead was. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Let me put it like this and... Uh, it's a crude illustration, but let me put it like this. It's like a tire. You know, you've got the tire on the outside. You've got the tube on the inside. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's inside the tire. And then you've got the air inside of that. The, God, these, the Father is always uh, made, and then there's the Son. And then the, the, uh, uh, the, the Spirit is like... Every time we read about spirit in the Bible, uh, it will be like the wind or the air. Amen. You remember Jesus is telling Nicodemus about getting born again. He said, Nicodemus, uh, he said, the spirit, uh, the wind bloweth, and he's talking about the spirit, bloweth where it listeth. He said, you can't tell from whence it cometh, whether it goeth. He said, the spirit goes where it wants to. Yeah. You can't tell the wind where to blow. Right. You can't tell the wind when to blow. But it blows and it goes wherever it wants to. Right. And that's the way the Spirit of God. You can't, uh, you can't tell the Spirit where to go. You can't tell the Spirit what to do. But when he made man, he made man in his own image. You see, they, man has a body. And then he has a soul that is just like the outside, but it's an eternal being. But there's something happened when Adam sinned, and we'll get into that a little later on. Uh, but that the Spirit died. He, God said, uh, In the day that ye eat thereof, ye shall surely die. And man didn't die physically that same day. Uh, the soul was still alive, but the Spirit died within him. Right. Uh, the Bible said in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, it said, And ye who were dead in sins and trespasses. Right. I heard a, a man a preaching on the radio. I was, I was in a truck and I was listening to the radio. He was doing some real good preaching. But he said, man is not born a sinner. He said, man is born innocent. And then he goes through his uh, uh, juvenile years. And then when he gets into his teenage years, they sin. And they become a sinner. But I believe that the Bible said that David said, I was shaping an iniquity and sin. Did my mother conceive me? You know, a man don't become a sinner because he sins. Man sins because he's a sinner. Uh, I mean, yeah, and I'll put it like this. Uh, I know all of you's watched, or most of you's watched the uh, 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 funniest videos, and it'd be a little old boy or girl, about two or three year old, and he'll be into something, have uh, chocolate all over his face, and they'll say, did you eat that? No. I mean, they know how to lie, don't they? And we never get over it. Right. We know how to lie. We know how to. Uh, uh, we know how to 
uh, get around it. I heard the story about this old boy didn't want to go into work one night, and he hated to call his boss and just tell him, say, I'm sick. He hated to lie like that. Went in and asked his wife, said, what are we having for supper? And she said, fish. He went in, laid down on the bed, said, bring that fish in here. And she took a, a pack of frozen fish down there, and he threw it in my iron, caught it, handed it back to his wife, said, go call my boss and tell him that I'm lying in the bed, lying flat on my back, throwing up my supper. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, we still, we can get around. I remember a few years ago, I had a doctor's appointment at the uh, first day of their season. I never realized it till it's right before I had to go. And I told him, I said, you call up there and tell them, you're going to have to change my point. I'm taking shots. And she called up there and told that girl, I know that girl that worked up there. And she said, Philip can't come, he's taking shots. And she said, what's you taking shots for? And she said, it dear. said, <laughs> And she called me a name. It wasn't a bad name. But, but you see, it, it's in all of us. You say, preacher, I've never lied. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. We lie unintentionally sometimes. But it's in our nature. It's in man's nature. Man has a nature when he fails. But anyway, he said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him and male and female created he them. Yes. Let me say just a word or two right here. And I won't stay on this long, but uh, here we see from verse 24 through uh, 25, the creation of animal. And then we see the creation of man. Yeah. There is no link between man and animal. Right. They are totally separate. Right. God made man in his own image. God made man a free moral agent. Yeah. Uh, animal don't have that. Uh, animal is prone to do the instinct that God uh, put in him. You know, Jude talked about it and the Apostle Peter talked about it and said... Uh, that in the last days they would be uh, men uh, uh, having no conscience and all they would do uh, is, to, is to, uh, be, to, all they'd know is as natural brute beast. Amen. And that's the way they are. God made man. Amen. And he made him a free moral agent. He can choose. He can choose life and live or death and die. Amen. God gave man two things that animals don't have. The ability to speak and talk, have words. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You can't, te uh, you can't teach, I don't care how smart an animal is, you can't teach it to talk. I mean, you, you might get a dog to arf, arf, arf something and sound like uh, something, but it ain't a talking. And an animal can't write. But God made it that man can. Separates them. And besides, uh, notice there, the Bible said in verse 27, God created a male and female. A one cell organism has uh, no sex. Uh, but he made them male and female. He made them different. Amen. And God said here, let them have dominion. I mean... God said, let man be the, I guess, over everything. God put man in the garden and he put him in this earth and he put him over everything. Amen. And I believe, in, and you can believe whatever you want to. The Bible don't say this. I, but I believe man had, uh, uh, I, I believe that man had dominion over the weather. I believe man had dominion uh, because God I uh, put him on the earth and he said, Now, Adam, uh, it's up to you. I'm giving you rule over it. And you say, Well, he'd have, made it, he'd have messed up. No, he wouldn't like us. Before he sinned, he was like God. He had the nature of God. He was 100% able 
And then let us go on. And God blessed them. And God's still blessing us, ain't he? Man, I tell you, today's been a great day. God's Amen. blessed us. If we don't never have another good day, and when you have a bad day, you think back about today and the good service we had and the good spirit we felt and the good communication we had out between each other and between God. Amen. God blessed him and said, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. You know, and I'm not going to get into that, and, uh, and I don't know, I, I don't know a lot. But when he said and replenish the earth, it sounds like that they had been a generation here before, don't it? I don't know. Maybe they was, maybe they was. But he said, multiply and replenish Amen. the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and every living thing that I moveth upon the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielded seed to you it shall be for meat man before uh, the Adam sin was a vegetarian in fact uh, even before the flood I believe ma that man was a vegetarian and notice here he said that they eat of things that grow above the earth he said every herb bearing seed and the earth, uh, uh, which is upon the face of the earth after the flood. And then God said uh, that uh, they could eat of everything uh, that come from the ground. And man didn't start eating meat till after the flood. But he was a vegetarian. And I'm not trying to get you to uh, be a vegetarian. I mean, uh, uh, I, like, I like vegetables. In fact, yesterday when we cooked, uh, my neighbor called me the uh, other day and said, come over. And I went over and he had me a big bag of creasy greens picked. And, uh, and, and, and I don't know, I know you know what creasy greens is. You older people do anyhow. And you can't hardly beat them, can you? And, uh, and, and, uh, and I ate a bunch of herbs. Uh, <laughs> they was good too. But God said, I'm going to give you everything. You know the healthiest people in the world is people that live on fruits and, and, and they live in tropical countries. They live on fruits and they live on uh, uh, and they live on vegetables and they're the healthiest people in the world. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I really, I believe what that, uh, uh, what that uh, kills so many American people is uh, not the stuff we eat, the stuff we put on what we eat. Uh, you know, uh, you have to go, a, if you raise a garden, you have to go a dusting and a spraying and uh, all, all the time. If you have anything, there's a bug or a worm right there to eat it. And you can spray him and he'll fly off and get a breath of iron right back eating again a lot of times. And, uh, and, uh, and we eat uh, stuff, that, uh, stuff that kills bugs. It's like, friend of mine's got a store and last year he tried to give me, he said, let me give you a handful of corn here. And I said, I got corn. He said, you ain't got nothing like this. He said, this corn, it was a genetically modified that he said you can plant it and he'll keep the worms out of your corn. I said, I don't want it. He said, why? I said, if he'll kill worm, enough of it'll kill me. And uh, listen, I believe when God created everything, he created it perfect. I believe that he created it to, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, mobilize our bodies and to give us fuel and energy and growth. And God said, and God said here, he said, God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree to, which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for me. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and upon the earth wherein is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. 
And really, I believe the animals eat. I believe there's vegetarians too. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. Amen. Very good. It wasn't as good, it's very good. God is very good. Amen. What he does for us is very good. Hey, some of the finest people here are sitting in this church I've ever met. But there's not one of us that really deserves what God does for us. Not one. It's by his grace. You know, grace is something that was given to us. Freely. Right. Didn't cost nobody anything. It's just a, uh, as the dictionary would describe it, the unmerited favor of God. Right. Salvation is free to us, yeah. but it costs Jesus his life. Right. Amen. And God saw everything that is made, and behold, it's very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Right. Now, uh, I'm, I'm trying to hurry on. Sometimes I get caught up and, and stay on something too long. But uh, we need to study about how this thing got started. It didn't just explode. It wasn't just a spontaneous thought of God. Before that, and I don't even know how to explain it, uh, before the eons, before the earth began, God knew what he was going to do. He made man. Amen. No wonder David said, I am fearful and wonderfully made. Yes. And we are. And God made us, and God put on the inside of us a spirit and a soul. And boy, I appreciate that. And that soul that is on the inside is going to be a, living a million years from now. Amen. Somewhere. Amen. Somewhere. It will either be living in heaven or it will be living in hell. And I'm glad God made a way that we can escape the wrath of God. I'm glad he made a way uh, through our Lord Jesus. I wonder if anybody's got anything before we change the service. This altar's open tonight if you need to come to the altar. If it's open, you get up and come on. One anywhere, say, preacher, I need to come. And I know this may have been dry, and a lot of, a lot of th uh, th uh, things in the Bible is scattered. But, you know, when we read the Word of God, I used to would skip over the begats. And I mean, uh, when we start reading them, uh, it's really not much interesting. I'll just be honest about it. But it's the Word of God. Amen. And there's so many of the words that I can't say, but I spell them. Because it is the Word of God. Uh, I was thinking this evening, Gus Howell was the leader of the Communist Party when uh, they was, uh, uh, when America and Russia was in the Cold War, as they call it. And uh, communism has taken over, it took over Romania and Czechoslovakia and uh, places and uh, even Cuba down here next to the United States. And it took that over. You know what Gus Hall said? He said, first of all, he said he'd never be satisfied till he saw the last Christian drug over the altar and his throat slit and his blood run out upon the altar uh, in our churches. And then he said that you could take enough monkeys and put enough typewriters in a room, give them enough time, and they'd come up with the King James Bible. But you couldn't. You get a world full of monkeys, a world full of typewriters, give them millions of years and they'd never come up because this is inspired of God. Amen. It is the Word of God. It's been good to be here, good to see you out. Remember, study uh, this in the book of Genesis. Anybody got anything before we go? We appreciate all of you being here. It's, uh, uh, it's good to see you. Good to see if you're visiting, we appreciate you. All right, let us stand.
Roger, you dismiss us.